Off top, a day on Mercury is twice as long as a year. Play the music. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show. All right, welcome to the Dominique Foxworth Show. I'm joined by my guy, Charlie Kravitz, the Vanilla Snack, as you guys know, and the only member of the Foxworth Show Hall of Fame right now, Mr. Wozni Lambry. What's happening, man? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm happy to be back with my guys. It's, it's exciting times. And before we get to start, man, uh, just to show you guys how loyal of a listener I am, I was listening to you guys talk to Derek Thompson. Oh, yeah. He's a ringer guy as well, one of one of the greats. Um, and he mentioned his favorite football player ever is Peyton Manning. My favorite football player too. So shout to Derek Thompson for that. There that, we go. that made that 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 made my heart swell hearing that. Well, he he has good sports opinions, but what he doesn't have is a gold jacket. Well, I guess we would have a purple jacket <laughs> or a teal jacket. He is not in the Fox Roof Show Hall of Fame. The only person in there right now is you because of uh, sacrifices made in the production of the show, which people will never know about the sacrifices that Wozniak has made for us. So we appreciate That's it. That's right. Also, in the pre-show chit-chat conversation, Wozni was saying some stuff that wasn't necessarily meant for air, but I cut him off because he said a sentence that I was like, all right, we're starting the show here. So eventually we're going to get to the rest <laughs> of the NBA playoffs. We're going to get to some gambling stuff. There's a lot of good stuff for the show. But first, we got this text. Kevin Durant was in my dream last night. <laughs> so Wozni, <laughs> we're all in suspense. What the oh, hell man. was he doing? So... I know that I've gone on either Bill's show, probably on my podcast, maybe even up here, just like, you know, just being generally kind of cold on yeah. KD's quote unquote legacy mm -hmm. as a hooper, just like, you know, some of his best successes came on teams that it's hard to get excited about. It was very not dramatic. It seemed like a cakewalk. It seemed very um, easy. And KD has provided a, a lack of drama and in his success, right? And I think people respond to that by being indifferent generally to um, KD's accomplishments. And I think, like, I've said on air, like, you know, I'm not moved by or something to that effect. Like, I'm not moved by <laughs> KD's uh, basketball achievements. And last night in my dream, I was at a game. <laughs> and, I, like, I was pretty close to the court. And KD was absolutely killing people uh. and he kept yelling at me not moved huh <laughs> and he, every time he made a fadeaway he would yell at me like still oh okay yeah you're not moving not impressed huh like dead stone cold serious and screaming at me i hope this happens and the in other real life. part of my dream is that i'm friends with somebody who's friends with kd and in my dream i'm like yo did this <laughs> snitch on me to kd like told him like yo this this <laughs> was be talking about you like so in my dream i'm mad at my homie who's uh, yeah. friends with kd and i'm almost also like embarrassed because kd is just he's killing people and he's just yelling at me about it that'd be really embarrassing i can't i can't imagine what it would be like for an nba superstar to use their greatest moment to mock you for having doubted them i have no idea <laughs> what that would ever be be like it sounds Shouts tough to though. Chef. I don't. I don't think you need to worry about that though. I don't think KD is <laughs> leading the, this Suns team to a title, so I don't. I don't. I think you'll be good, Waz. <laughs> oh, man, he doesn't have to lead him to a title. It could just be a court if, for the dream to come true. I know. You just gotta have one blackout game. Waz, wanted... you going to any of the Suns games? <laughs> Um, no, I will not be at any Suns game. If Too they bad. make it to the conference finals, possibly. Mm. But, yeah, first two I hope, rounds, I hope no, I'll, just I'll be, I'll be press, watching from Los Angeles. Post-game press conference, just like, <laughs> just in case well, anybody uh, wasn't. I hope I moved y'all with them 66 points I just put up. <laughs> I wouldn't be the first. Uh, my guy, Ethan Strauss, he was the first to get yelled at by KD uh, yeah. at a press conference. He said, we got a guy, Ethan Strauss, <laughs> offering his whole opinion. He don't even talk to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. I think he might be coming for Bob Myers too. After Bob Myers said, "I could have spent the two years in Hawaii, and we still would have gotten ranked with those teams." <laughs> yeah, those are pretty good teams, and that's pretty true. All right, guys. So the postseason, it's here. We're excited. Yeah. We have a full round of first round matchups. Um, going to be hard to parse through all of them. So I think we do this: an NBA playoffs pressure draft. We're each going to draft mm. three teams, players, coaches, 
who we think have the most at stake in this postseason, the most to win, the most to lose, the, the guys who have the most storylines. Draft order, Waz, you're our guest. You're going to get the first pick. Dominique opted for the second pick. He wants a sandwich pick, and I will take the third pick in the snake. So, Waz, you're on the clock. Who would you like as, as having the most pressure this postseason? I thought about this, man, and, and I still think it's the Clippers hmm. because, one, they've already paid Kawhi. Two, Paul George is due for a contract this summer. Three, so is James Harden, who forced his way to the Clippers with an understanding that he would get paid, right, this summer. Not a max contract, probably not, like, anything exorbitant, but, like, way more than what the Sixers were willing to give him um, that prompted him to call Daryl Morey a liar in the process, a snake, uh, you know, a backstabber, et cetera. And I think if they lose in the first round and they just flame out in the first round, they go out and they pay Paul Jones and they pay uh, James Harden and they just like, we're just going to do this all over again next year. And the foreseeable future, again, like, it just seems like those two things can't happen. Maybe they figure something out with Paul George where they sign him and they move him to, to, to you know, shake things up. And even that becomes complicated because of the the cap implications. I've got some ideas about who would be a nice little trade fit for them. Mm. But I think the Clippers, man, because they, they're opening that new building, because the team is already extremely expensive, I get it, Balmer's richer than the next, like, yeah. 15, 16 yeah. owners combined. But, like, man, it just seems weird that they would get cooked in the first round, again, underachieve, and just say, let's do it again for the sixth year in a row. I appreciate you reminding us about when James Harden was in China and decided to call Daryl Morey a liar. Let me repeat it. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> that repeat it. That was a great moment in uh, NBA offseason foolishness that I had just slipped my mind. But, yeah, that was fun. So, yeah, the Clippers, they are obviously under a tremendous amount of pressure. But it feels like they don't have the people on this roster that we like to jump on because Kawhi, mm. we excuse him for injuries and he yeah. has a championship. It doesn't, and Kawhi was never meant to be on this high pedestal. Two it kind of feels like, yeah, he has two championships. I forgot the one with uh, where they beat the Heat, but he has that one isolated, I'm alone, I'm the best player in the NBA championship. Yeah. He has the things and he wasn't expected to reach the heights that he reached. So it, to me, kind of feels like, there, the expectations aren't that high, despite the fact that the money is high and the the names are big. I, I, I can't. I mean, it'll be a disappointment. So it's no uh, no disagreement there. But I don't think of Kawhi and the Clippers as one of these teams that are like make or break this year. I guess it's true for Paul George because they get so. Are lose we talking him. about the first round, or are we talking about the playoffs in general? Whatever, however you want to frame it. It's a choose your own adventure. Yeah, Kawhi okay, needs so, a lot so of let's, pressure. So yeah. let's put it like this: if it's we're talking about the first round, I think it's the Clippers. Yeah, I think even Phoenix, man, the disjointed nature of the season, even as expensive as they are, yeah. even as like KD continues to like not do anything in the playoffs ever since he left Golden State. Right. Um, um, I think there will be some excuses because they're playing, you know, right. the, the, like it's tough. They're, they're, they're the sixth seed. And it, like, uh, the, I don't think they should be expected to actually win that series. That's now, true. if we're talking about the entire playoffs, yeah. if Boston loses at any point before the NBA finals, Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, my God. I don't think I'll ever stop podcasting. That might be a seven-hour pod. <laughs> that was my – that, that, that happens. That was my draft sound because the pick is in for, uh, for, you? for, <laughs> for <the second> Dominic <laughs> Fox or for the second pick of the draft is the Boston Celtics, Joe Missoula. Speci- oh, I, I'll man. take them all. Joe Missoula specifically. Ask, yeah. yeah, Jason Tatum too. Your favorite player, Charlie, Jalen Brown. There is Fifth pressure. <laughs> There's pressure, Bro. pressure, pressure. They are by far the best team in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Getting to the title game, I feel like, and they've been to the title game enough times that we even kind of expect them to win one finally it does feel like this is their playoffs for like this is the playoffs where they could do the most damage to themselves their legacies forever that matters for any of these players their future job opportunities for Joe Missoula like this 
is their playoffs, to me at least, when it comes to like most to lose. Yeah. They may not have the most to gain, and it depends on how you define pressure, uh, but pressure is some equation between how much you have to gain, how much you have to lose, how much time you have left, and how unique is this opportunity. And I feel like they have the most unique opportunity with a week east to win the championship win everything. And if they don't, somebody is getting blamed. How do you tier that? Because that not to make you now draft no, Celtics I'm down with the most, most yeah. pressure because there is Tatum, who's a potentially first team all NBA, second team all NBA guy. There's so, Jalen Brown's the highest paid player in the NBA. Missoula yeah. was on the hot seat last year. There's normally I think we go with the with the top player, but there's mm. it's different now. Like I feel like right now, because Joe Missoula, because of their coach change uh, and that unique situation around that, and Joe Missoula is also kind of, I think, quirky. I guess is a nice way to put the weird stuff that. Yeah, he that does. whole thing about that whole business about watching the town every single day before playoff games or whatever that was. That yeah. that was that was strange. That, that was, was a first. For me. And then and then going and contesting shots of opponents during timeouts and uh, <laughs> and, and liking to get choked out. Yeah. Oh yes, also that, <laughs> and also. Um, <laughs> Late season coaching decisions that didn't make any sense, where he's like, "Oh no, we just we just testing stuff out." That sort of stuff, I think, sets him up, and it it doesn't matter how it happens. But I think that, and he's also the most expendable. Like, they're kind of locked in with the rest of these guys. I think he has set himself up to be top of that list. So the twenty twenty one season, a lot of people forget this. But boss 2021-22, when they went to the finals and lost to the um to the to the Golden State Warriors, before January, they were like a really they were a middling team. Yeah. And the the screams of like, yo, man, the two J's, like, are they ever gonna figure this out? Maybe it is time, as crazy as it might seem, to separate this these guys. It's not working, blah, 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 blah. You know, they insert Robert Williams into the starting lineup. They they start this run of literally world record breaking defense. Yep. They get all the way to the finals, barely lose to the Warriors. But we forgot that moment where like everybody was so pissed before they turned it around in January and turned themselves into a juggernaut. If they somehow again they go out and get Porzingis and they you know they win all these games they're smashing records for for um net rating they're clearly the best team in the league all year and everybody's telling me that the twenty seven Yankees and blah 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 <laughs> blah blah, bruh. If these people come up short, I'm sorry. Yeah. If they get to the Denver Nuggets and uh. lose in some semi-respectable fashion, everybody's gonna be okay with that. I don't mm-hmm. think anybody really yeah. thinks they're better than the Nuggets. But if they don't make it to the finals, y'all, there's going to be hell to pay for sure. We we all think they're making the finals, though, right? If we deep down with this Easter Conference, yeah, I mean, especially with the heat, it's looking, not a given. Yeah, with the heat looking as um, broken as they look right now. That's the team that you feel like has some whatever mental kryptonite over them. They aren't going to be good enough. The Knicks aren't going to be good enough. I mean, Lillard and Giannis, neither of them could even get on the floor at this point. Like, I, I there's no way that they don't make it to the 76ers. Like, obviously, we got the Embiid injury. <laughs> like, there's no way. There's, there's just no way, over there. huh? There's no, there's no way. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love this. Roll All back right. this tape. Yeah. Save it. Yeah. I mean, just no way. Huh? I feel like okay. Char- Charlie has some some hate in his heart for. Um, oh, it's my turn. No, I mean, I, I, I guess we're going to get off of this before you let the hate in your heart out about um, Jalen Brown. Oh, no. I mean, it's just like we, we talked about this before the podcast started a little bit. When you're the highest paid player in NBA history, and I genuinely think this, he is a good basketball player. Oh, he is the Offen. fifth most important player in their starting five. If 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 any of those guys were to be gone for a series, if you had to ask them in like a totally sober secret moment, Joe Maz is saying, "Yeah, dude, dude, we can we can take out the guy who can't dribble with his left hand and his defensive effort waxes <laughs> and wanes." He's the one. So you think uh, they rather? They're, they're like, we rather- can't lose Porzingis. We can't use uh-huh. Tatum. The guards uh-huh. are dogs. Jalen, uh, we'll be okay. Wait, you saying Drew Holiday is more important to the success of the Celtics? That's what he's saying. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly. <laughs> he's less. 
<laughs> less he's uh that's uh, actually that's not that's exactly have you, let me Drew rephrase ha- this have you, have you watched <laughs> let me Drew rephrase this. play offense in the last three playoffs let me rephrase this he's less replaceable oh, to God. the way that they play basketball oh gosh I, I don't i don't agree with that either drew holiday and even Derek white who god bless him he's the great connector um, don't tell Bill this. You know, he, he, he's the one that loves to give the rock up. And I, I love Derek White as much as anybody. I'm like, you know, I generally roll my eyes at the stuff that the hipsters glom onto. But I really do truly yeah. love Derek White and the way he approaches the game. That being said, in the playoffs when, like, defenses break down, like, Jalen Brown is going to be the one breaking guys off down off the dribble, making shots, creating plays. Dribble? like. Yeah, yeah, something was, has gone I mean, really wrong if that's the case, guys. He's not a catch and shoot player. He oh, is. He does create his player. shot. Like yeah. I can't believe I'm up here defending no, Jalen no, no, Brown. No, 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 no. Like, um, it's it's he's at not the level Duncan that you, Robinson. Guys. No, Duncan Robinson added some shit to his game. Duncan oh, Robinson got some, Duncan Robinson got some tools now. <laughs> got some tools now, and he also has a oh. reliable shot. Um, I think. Oh man, it's at the level. So yeah, I'm. I'm certainly. I just wanted Charlie to say what he said. I'm not gonna get out here and start taking shots I'm, at Jalen. I'm delighted. Brown. I got. I, I got Waz to got become it. a Jalen Brown stand live on air that after after he wished for the downfall of this Celtics team. <laughs> now, now he's a Jalen guy. I can't believe you missed the layup of Dominique being like of of the line. You know, Boston fans would prefer to have Duncan Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> they would have. <laughs> Dr. Robinson. I don't care what you say. You he's a useful. He's a useful player. Useful player. I like Dr. Robinson. Robinson too. Uh, the board. Am I on the board? You're on the board or uh, on All the right. clock? Can't believe this fell. To I me. can't believe this fell to me. I thought. Before, I thought you were going to take him, so I didn't get to do it. Waz mentioned him, but he took the Clippers. It's the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. When you mm. have Kevin Durant, who whined mm. his way to another super Here we team. Go. You have Matt Ishbia. <laughs> you have Matt Ishbia, whose whose crowning achievement is holding on to the ball and trying to get Nikola Jokic suspended, and then doing this. Is this an oxymoron to you? Going all in for Bradley Beal? That's oh, the oxymoron. God. Then going, or, or is this the oxymoron? Going all in for Grayson Allen? Oh, when you have this <laughs> team and then this roster and your your three kings, your superstars. Oh, if you goodness. lose in the first round to Rudy Gobert, who's someone who Dominique has liked to make make fun of for the last not half fun decade. Of I like if you Rudy. lose to that team. <laughs> the pressure Rudy. is on him. Listen, look, um, the season has been so disjointed for the Suns. Um, Bradley Bill could barely stay on the floor. Uh, most imp- most dishearteningly, they've had the worst fourth quarter offense in the NBA, which yeah. is seems insane yeah. when you have Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and Bradley Bill on your team that your problem would be generating quality looks in the fourth quarter. Um, I just think they'll look at it like, yo, yeah. we can run this back next year, improve this thing on the margins, pray for better injury luck, improve our seating in the West, and and we'll be okay. But trust me, make no mistakes about it. If these guys lose to Minnesota, I personally will will have, you know, uh, KD in my estimation, my opinion of him will be lowered ever so slightly by losing this particular series with a Carl Anthony Towns is hurt, a Minnesota team who's never accomplished anything um, as a collective or individually <laughs> when you talk about the players on the team. Um, the God, idea the that this Phoenix man. team can't beat these guys is, you know, that would be pretty disappointing. I mean, the Phoenix team and- has been better than them, though. Like, even – when they've played each other, like they've had a, for whatever reason, whatever matchup problems that yeah. there are, the, the, it leans in Phoenix's favor. So I think you're right. They yeah. should win this. And Kevin Durant is, he's one of those players that's been around long enough that you, and has done things and said things that have made, made it clear that there are people on sides and you're right. There are people who can't wait for Kevin Durant to fall short again so that they can say something about him and act like he did not carry that Warriors dynasty. Can I say something nice about him? Please. I actually do think like if, if things come together for Phoenix, I do think they're, they're the team that has the best chance of, of beating Denver in the West. Like if, if things get hot and you have their offense really humming because, and for the record, that's why there's pressure because the high level ceiling of these guys offensively should be enough to make them a threat to anyone in the postseason. Uh, are you snaking it? Yeah, I'm up again. 
Um, God, there's a lot of good picks here. <laughs> can't there really are. For me. There yeah. really are. But and I, I can't believe I'm I'm leaving a pick on the board that I thought was going to be the number one pick, but maybe it'll come back around to me at the end of the draft. I'm taking the process himself, oh. Joel Embiid. Mm. I know mm. this year he's coming back from a knee injury. He was averaging I mean, 35 a game. I'm sorry, but. He's always coming back from it. Yep. <laughs> like, it's it's he's, like Joel Embiid. So, someone tweeted this. I'm sorry I'm not giving you credit that he's the GOAT at letting you know that he's exhausted during a playoff game. That he's he can emote it through a television screen better than anyone else. <laughs> because he's actually exhausted. <laughs> um, but look, here, the here's the deal. At exhaustion. <laughs> they are. He's the goat of fatigue. <laughs> he's the goat of fatigue. No, he's not even. That would be more respectful than what Charlie said. Charlie said he is the goat at expressing fatigue, which is oh, like, that was. I was. I was paraphrasing a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I can't take credit for that joke. He's like he one is. of the best silent actors of yeah. his era. Gotcha. Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. Big Charlie. <laughs> um, I see you, Big Chap. <laughs> but. Doc is gone. Ben Simmons is gone. Mm. James Harden's gone. They are the betting favorites against the Brett Knicks. Brett Brown in the first is round. gone. Don't Brett forget Brett gone. Brown was yeah. a whipping boy too. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they're the favorites against the Knicks. They could conceivably, depending on Giannis's calf, play Indiana in the second round if they get through the Knicks, which is certainly not a given. And this guy's never gotten out of the second round. He campaigned for an MVP, got the MVP. This year is playing oh, the best man. basketball of his career. That was career. embarrassing, by yeah. the way. The MVP campaign, that that's that's unbecoming. But go, yeah. carry on, Charlie. Well, well, now that you are an MVP, you better get out of the second round. Uh, what do you think, Wasi? Well, first of all, I don't want to hear about his injury because I don't know if you guys have been on social media. He's playing in France this year for Team USA. So, obviously... Everybody knows that he's going to be healthy enough to play for Team <laughs> USA and start at center for us. So he's clearly not hurt. Oh, I'm gosh. obviously I'm being facetious there. But yeah, Joe, well, I mean, look, this is pro- his more most significant probably of the injuries that he's dealt with in the playoffs for sure. But take injuries aside, man, like Joel has been a disappointing playoff player yeah. his entire career. He's never played up to his regular season standard in a single series. I'm talking about first round series against teams they should have smacked up and mopped up. He wasn't that. Like, he's never done it for a series, guys, much less over the course of an entire playoff. And so, you know, and and I'll say this, like, even watching yesterday as limited that he was, I think we saw some of the evolution of Joel's game where, like, as the game went on, he got better at reading, Mm -hmm. you know, the zone defense that was giving him problems traditionally. Putting two on Joel damn near amounted to an automatic turnover. God didn't know how to beat a double team at certain points. Like, he's gotten better. He's improved his game in the playoffs from the first time we saw him there. But, you know, I tend to agree with Charlie. He's been a major disappointment. And if he goes out and disappoints against this Knicks team, diminished as they are, a a team that's limping themselves into the postseason, a team that everybody looks at as a little engine that could. Like, you know, their MVP candidate is six foot tall. Like, nobody thinks this is some two-seed juggernaut. And if Joel can't find it within himself to cook up Hartenstein, I mean, come on, y'all. Don't disrespect my brother. I will yeah, not stand for you disrespecting brother. my brother, brother. Isaiah Hartenstein. He's a Babe Ruth type of brother. Sure. <laughs> yes, he has to deal with the exact same experience, but enough, enough. I mean, all right. So there's a bunch of things said. You guys, the un- unbecoming of uh, saying that campaigning for an MVP is unbecoming yeah. to me is ridiculous from both of you. Man yeah. wants MVP, campaign for it. That's what, like, people campaign yeah. for awards. They do it all the time. Maybe they didn't do it in the no. way that you wanted to or maybe it took Mm-mm. away from someone you think is more deserving. LeBron's campaigning for Defensive Player of the Year's awards from a decade ago. It's kind of what they do. They campaign for unbecoming. awards. Who cares? Uh, definitely unbecoming. <laughs> Dominique is no different than when Kanye calls himself a genius. It's like, yes, you have genius musical talent, but it sounds weird <laughs> when you say it yourself. <laughs> Uh, I guess whatever. I don't care much about that. I I tend to like maybe it's the cornerback mm. in me. I tend to like the mm. talking. I guess there's a difference mm. between saying give me a trophy and and saying I'm the best in the NBA. I don't think anyone has a problem with someone saying I am the best. Maybe you don't like him saying yeah. give me a trophy. Saying yes. I am the best and then not exactly following right. it up is 
is a different story. Dominique, yes, how sir. is this any different than when Rudy cried for not making the All Star team while making forty million dollars a year? <laughs> it's, it's not he different. cried on camera in You're, front of microphones I, I and can't. then blamed it on his mom. Said his mom is going to be so disappointed, and he <laughs> cried. Jo- Joel campaigning is is akin to that for me. Okay, that's fine. We'll get to some Rudy talk eventually. I, I'm guessing because. Poor guy. It's his time of year right now. Board is yours. <laughs> Playoff time. I did. I mean, all right. The the last thing I'll say. No, before, you want to defend Embiid. Go ahead. No, I no yeah, yeah. That's what I said. That's Embiid's what I'm saying. The last thing that I'll say before I defend Joel Embiid is overall, a player with his accomplishments, regular season, and his skill level, and his talent, and his, the time he spent in the career, and in, in the league so far, he should have gotten further. <laughs> However, <Good. laughs> okay. each of these feel explainable to me. So your point about him never playing that well in a particular series is fine. But every step of the way, all the guys that we're calling scapegoats, they aren't just scapegoats. It's kind of right. Like, these, this is good reason. It's like James Harden and, and <laughs> a guy who was scared to shoot. Like, these are good reasons for them not to, for him to have not to make it, it, make it deeper. That's all. That's all I'm saying. That, five, what's your scapegoat for his five for 18 in game seven last year against the Celtics? Everyone has bad <laughs> games. Everyone has bad ones. <laughs> the Celtics were better than them. Charlie. The Celtics were, that's to my point. The Celtics were better, better team. I have a, you oh, before better before teams you make your next you. pick, I have All a question, guys. Right. Like, who is Dominique's DAC of the NBA? Is it KD? Yeah. 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 Is KD? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's KD. I think if we have to, yeah. I mean, I feel like Chris Paul is probably a better comp, but I don't have to, I don't find myself defending Chris Paul it's nearly okay. as much as I defend Kevin Durant. And I'm right about Kevin Durant and Dak Prescott, for that matter. Y'all just uh, haters. <laughs> We're both right about Kevin Durant. <laughs> yeah, this is when it comes down to it. It's somewhere in the middle. All right. I'm yeah. shocked that this crew is still on the board. They were projected number one in the pressure draft. It's the Bucks. Mm-hmm. It's mm. got to be the Bucs. Uh, it's an odd situation in that Giannis, I don't feel like, is under pressure. But everyone no. else is because – Damian Lillard, we brought you here to solve this, and you've made it worse. They wish that they could go back and get Holiday back at this point, given what he's contributed to their team <laughs> offensively and the cost that it's uh, the toll that is put on their defense. So uh, yeah. Doc shows up to fix everything. He ain't fixed it. It's a problem. And uh, Giannis will be up soon enough. So, like, and they have this game, this series where Giannis and um, Lillard are injured, so it does feel like there's a lot of pressure on this team to have success if they're going to keep Giannis in the long term or have any more championship uh, consideration while he's there. I think for this year, they can do enough excuse making that mm. they'll be fine. Right. Um, they clearly hired the wrong coach at Giannis's behest. I might add. Mm-hmm. Uh, Giannis 86 to Nick Nurse thing That's mm-hmm. a thing That happened And they went out and got Adrian Griffin Who was an abject disaster Essentially from the beginning Had no buy-in from anybody on the team That was a mistake Derailed their season They've had terrible injury luck with Chris Middleton Who's finally back But you know they had to work him back in And a very top heavy team They cannot afford to lose any of their top level guys Uh, Giannis has now messed up his calf You know what I'm saying Going into the playoffs And so I think they could talk themselves Yeah, Doc not having a training camp There's enough excuses That they could talk themselves into this. But the bottom line is they went all in this year to be a championship level team. And if they have a flame out, yeah, it's going to look bad. But I will say about Giannis too, a lot of these mistakes were made at Giannis's behest. Um, And also he signed that damn extension last offseason, basically right after or right before the Dame thing happened. And so, bro, you got five years left. Sit down and shut up. Sorry. Sorry, Wozniak. You may be right, but you're wrong. Just because the bad decisions were at his behest, and just because he signed the extension, I mean, unless the NBA that you're talking about is a different one, there is a future of the NBA that's different than the most recent past. Damian Lillard is the first time that we saw a star not get exactly what they wanted, and he still got up out of town. So, I, don't, I mean, maybe Giannis, you think Giannis ain't that guy, but I don't think that – 
And I know this for sure. Let's say that Giannis is upset with how things turned out and he wants to force a trade. If he walks into the office and says, hey, get me out of here. If your response is, no, we in this problem because you up that you have made a mistake, sir. Don't start blaming yeah. him. Don't start blaming no, him. It doesn't no, no, matter no. why the situation is bad. If he want to go, he can go. I, I I tend to disagree. I think the Dame situation, even the KD situation, where those guys forced themselves out. In Brooklyn, Joe Side was absolutely sick of their Right. He was tired of those cats. Ownership was had quit. They had won. Like, the nonsense that KD and Kyrie presided over over there <laughs> turned management in such a way that they were willing to kick these dudes out and let the doorknob <laughs> hit split so their sad. cheeks on the way so out. Sad. And so because it turned so toxic and disgusting, and Josai himself was so <laughs> disgusted by what those cats had wrought, they said, you know what? Get these uh, dudes up out of here. Yeah. This is a disaster, right? Dame, Portland was horrible. Yeah. That's the difference. Like, Portland was so bad. They were not number two in their conference. They were not knocking on the right. door of championship contention. They were done. They were yeah. finished. And the only reason they held on to Dame, which I think matters to Giannis too, is that he's a box office draw. Like, them ticket sales matter to, to you know, these yeah. poor franchises like Milwaukee, like mm -hmm. a Portland, like a Memphis. And so I don't think Milwaukee's management Fair. is going to be like, they're just going to back into a corner and say, whatever, let's go to the poor house. Let's not sell tickets. Let's become wholly irrelevant because Giannis forced us to fire the best coach in our franchise's history and it didn't work out like i don't think management would be as ready to just be like yo Giannis, you got five years left but yeah let's do whatever the hell you want i don't i don't, I don't actually buy that yeah okay i don't i we can agree to disagree i just haven't seen it work out in the opposite way too often so like maybe it wouldn't be smooth maybe they wouldn't be happy about it but at a certain point i think given that they feel like they've gone all, all in they don't have a ton of assets to make anything happen if Giannis is not committed to finding some sort of way to bring someone in. Then the question that you are, or the decision that you're looking at, the fork in the road is, will go down this road with Giannis and no one else, inevitably not getting a championship, but still having a box office draw, or we'll go down this other road where we move Giannis for things that we think could set us up to have success. That's a different choice. So I get it. The choice that you're saying now is assuming that you can make something out of this. If Giannis is pissed, this is the thing about basketball stars is they are so valuable and so powerful that their feelings matter. And if he's upset, yes. if he's upset, then your future with him does suck. So maybe they'll stick it out and maybe they'll make it happen. But it's ten, it's tended to be the case that pissed off stars one out of town. They get out of town. That's all. I, I'll say this. I think the Bucks have erred in their needy. And I think franchises, honestly, um, in the recent future have been have messed up in this way. And instead of trying to be as competent as possible, they've tried to make a guy happy. Right. Which I don't think those two things necessarily um, are aligned with each other. Instead of just being like, yo, all right, you don't want Mike Budenholzer. We're going to go out and get the best coach possible as his replacement. They said, we're going to go out and get the coach that makes him happiest in right. this given moment. Right. And I think in the future, they should probably run their franchise in such a way that is like, yo, why don't we make the best basketball decisions and worry about making and just banking on the idea that the basketball outcomes right. will make this guy happy when they yeah. ultimately work out in everybody's favor. It's a lot easier said than done, but you're absolutely right. The board is yours, Waz. Yeah. You got two picks. Um, And another team that I think is in the Milwaukee uh, realm of pressure is the Dallas Mavericks. Mm. For everything that Dominique just and you guys just mentioned about Giannis with the Bucks, um, all of that can be applied to Luka Doncic, who the Mavs are, you know, extremely conscious of the idea that they have to make this guy happy. Right. Um, and I will say this so it's about, about pressure. Sorry, it's about pressure on them to keep this together, or is it about pressure on Luca to like take some sort of superstar step? 
I think it's on the Mavs to okay. win for their organization to keep moving in the Luka direction. Right. Um, I don't think Luka is past his darling phase yet okay. in NBA superstardom. Um, right? Like I think he's still in the honeymoon phase. He's still in the he's at the tail end. Don't yeah. get it twisted. Like he's at the tail end of it. It's about to get real nasty for him real soon if he doesn't start doing meaningful stuff in the postseason. But I think he's not gonna get killed yet. I think management, people will look at it and be like, look, the management has failed this obviously right. generational guy. And if the Mavs don't do well, and, and there's another reason I want to say this, is that if you if you talk to people in the know about what's going on with Dallas or things around Luka, there seems to be a lot of chatter that Luka might be the next big dog that uh -oh. says he wants to get out of there. All right, don't let him leave. Uh, a very smart man told me a segment ago. Oh, he don't got he don't say, got five don't years leave. left on his deal, Dominique. He don't got five <laughs> years left on the Fair deal. Point. There's Fair a difference point. between five and two. There is. I think it makes a big All difference. Right. You're right. Um, but, but I think a lot of people. There's a, just a lot of whispers around what Luca might want to do in the future. I came off of that too easy. I'm not as good a troll as Charlie. I need to work on my trolling. <laughs> you just gotta you gotta get in trench. That's why my man Charlie got them skills. He he's got producers. <laughs> Their abilities and he knows you got to keep prodding Charlie until you is, get the reaction that you that warrants uh people's attention charlie is a sicko he's a <laughs> right. sicko call calling jalen brown the fifth man is uh, just sick just, he, even for me a noted <laughs> boston skeptic and hater i'm like oh i i was pearl clutching oh, I, I had to be I, <laughs> wow wow that man knows, dc left hand up jalen brown can't do that <laughs> <laughs> that man loves uh, a quality troll. All right, I think I'm going to call it into the draft because there are other topics that I want to get to. Can There's I run through couple, some honorable yeah, mentions? Yeah, I was about to do the exact same thing. Okay, Please, no, no, no. You, I don't, we didn't get to my man, yeah. Rudy Gobert, who they, is one of my hobby horses <laughs> for conversation purposes, especially this time of year. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, speaking of uh, cheeks that get split, the Nuggets, <laughs> the Nuggets to the Lakers. Um, oh, yeah. there's, there's pressure. <laughs> Yo, what is, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, hold up. Don't ask for clarification. Don't ask oh. for clarification. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Uh, there's I'm pressure on both of them because the Nuggets brought back a, a mostly healthy team from a defending champion. I think a lot of people yeah. will want to use that to, to describe Jokic if he does fail yeah. and if he, the stakes are huge if he wins too for what, yeah. what it'll mean for his legacy. Yeah. Lakers, if they get swept in the first round, Big decisions out of L.A. and LeBron. Can I can I just say one thing about Rudy? Because I've actually made a like a kind of a 180 on the guy. I think Ooh. the rap that he's gotten in Utah about being quote unquote unplayable. Like yeah. if people don't remember that context where Utah mm -hmm. essentially built the team around the fact that Rudy was a generational defensive player and how they complemented that was by surrounding him with nothing but offense only guys. Mm -hmm. And z like I'm talking about zeros, all negatives on defense and just Rudy, and right. against the Clippers, yeah, dudes were getting cooked in one dribble by Reggie <laughs> Jackson and Terrence yeah. Mann, <laughs> and Rudy couldn't guard the whole court, and people say, Rudy got played off the court. It's like, no, if nobody can guard, and then on offense, Rudy can't shoot, yeah. Rudy can't help us with these terrible defenders, so we take him off with somebody that can help on offense. That was not Rudy's fault I in appreciate Utah. That. I just want to say that, because people keep saying that it's like, man, Donovan I, Mitchell was getting roasted. I appreciate the Rudy defense. However... He's French and acts funny, so people <laughs> are not going to take that. They are going to see this opportunity to, to jump it's on the true. man who... Everybody want to put him is, in a headlock like Draymond. Yeah, the man who single-handedly sparked the, the COVID epidemic oh or pandemic God, in America. They for COVID. Yeah, they did blame him. I mean, he did do some dumb shit, but anyway. Was is he is he your Dak? No, no, hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Who okay. is my Dak? That's a great so, question. Uh, we have to define this. We're saying someone, because I feel like it's become something different. Because Dak is actually really good. But it's, it's the, Rudy. Okay. So Somebody it's, who it's I the have person an unreasonable who, cape for? No, it's not unreasonable. Okay, fine. Unreason, unreasonable <laughs> cape is who's your Dak? Unreasonable cape? Uh, it might be Rudy. It could yeah. be Rudy. Back in the days, it was Dwight Howard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a defensive um, guy. I, I, you I like a defensive to, I, guy. They, like, it used to be Dwight Howard. I've had capes for A-Rod in the past because I hated <laughs> Derek Jeter. Um, 
I've had weird capes, man. Yeah. Just weird All right. capes. <laughs> All right. That's, I mean, we said those names because we weren't going to talk about them, but we ended up talking about them a little bit. Anyway, uh, I do think that the Nuggets is interesting because of, not because I think they'll get a lot of heat if they fall short, but because of what Jokic has, is in yeah. position to do. It's like he's really yeah. in position to, to start to, to really fulfill yeah. Yeah, those mm -hmm. legendary comparisons that his play has earned. But you're going to have to get more than one championship to go with those multiple um, MVPs. Was Dominique said that Here Jokic isn't fun to watch. No, I didn't. That's Here we crazy. go. Yeah, okay. that, that's, that's the crazy. direct quote. Wozni. Wozni. That is crazy. The direct quote. Wozni. He's that like, I'd rather insane. watch KD take mid-range jump shots. All right. Wow. I'll, see? You know what you wow. can't do? What you can't do is engage wow. with the troll. I'll have you wow. know, Wozni. And you're teaming with him. you wowing me up. You you guys are getting good. I, are, I, I just thought I knew you better than gonna, I thought I knew you better than this, Dominic. You got because it was a more it was a more detailed conversation than that. But it's fine. I want to get to more topics. I don't care. <laughs> do what you want to do. The fact of the matter is, I believe that Jokic, in isolation, the things that he does are not as fun to watch in isolation as the things that Kevin Durant does. I think valuing, enjoying Jokic's play is about watching a full game and appreciating the complexity of what he means to an offense. So, of course, this is about the conversation that a bunch of people had, not just us, where it's like, of course, Jokic strikes you as a boring player. You give me a Jokic highlight, it's not the same as KD working somebody in the mid-range. But if you give me a series of Jokic plays, it's like, Damn, he's making these mediocre guys look like Hall of Famers. It's a different conversation, but you can frame it the way you want. You win. See how he trolled out of me right there? This man is a skilled troll. Remember when you went to, I wasn't going to engage? I did, and then you got me to engage. <laughs> Man's got it. It was it was Wozni's wiles. It's the multiple wiles. You guys tag team me. Took, You're supposed to be on my be, side. I am on your side. I just uh. never took you to be a Kobe system type. Like, oh, the as long as it's a fadeaway mid-ranger with two people draped on you, even if you miss it 20, 78% of the time and make it 28, oh, it's so fun and so engaging and blah, blah, blah. I, I never took you to be that type of person. So what's next for Steph Curry, guys? Yeah, yeah, what do you yeah. think about <laughs> No, this is, this is the next guy. Was. I'm fascinated what you think about this. This is the first we've ever seen Steph, like, super exacerbated after a series. He looks mm -hmm. the, like... It's over with this group as like as it currently stands. But what do you think is next for Steph and the Warriors? Is there a chance to rebuild? Is there a superstar in waiting? How how does this play out with these three guys that presumably all three of them want to retire with this team? I think the to speak to Steph's frustration, I think there's the frustration of one, Draymond Green is 22 games with suspension. And they could if with three more wins, they would have been out of the plan. That's that's got to be that's got to be tough. These unnecessary suspensions that Draymond incurred, right? They went 11 and 12 in games that Draymond didn't play. I think they could have went 14 and 9 or whatever the um the case would have been with Draymond in the lineup. So that's got to be really frustrating when you're facing the end of your season. Clay, who obviously management knew they couldn't just send packing because Steph, their superstar, would not be happy about it. Um, and they respect Steph and his contributions. Um, the only relevance this franchise has ever known has been because of Steph Curry. Um, and watching Clay, who Steph definitely advocated for, go 0 for 10 and look completely cooked in a do or die game. That's frustrating. And just all the energy he had to expend to just be competent at all. When back in the days, man, like, the Warriors could just like be like, oh, you know what? In the non-Steph minutes, we play like kind of mediocre. But when Steph is on the floor, we absolutely blow everybody's doors off. Understanding that that's no longer the truth. And like, I understand why he's frustrating. That be frustrated, excuse me. That being said, I don't think they're that far from being as good as the, the Timberwolves are, you know, or from being as good as the Clippers and the Mavericks are. I don't think they're that far from that, right? Um, Lacob has already said that he's going to slash payroll. Chris Paul's $30 million is coming off. Even if they bring Clay at half of what he's making right now, I would say they should probably be paying him closer to mid-level, mid but whatever. Um, that's about... 50 almost 60 million dollars in payroll slashed off right there which frees them up to be more flexible in the roster construction which just allows them to be a more well-rounded team and 
you know, they got to figure out what's happening with with um Andrew Wiggins and why he's mm-hmm. so cooked and washed all of a sudden. Uh, and Kaminga needs to take another step. But I don't think all is lost. It's just you got to be frustrated by how this season has unfolded, especially when your guy, your other vet, your other championship equity captain guy is so is so responsible for the underachieving of the team. This is your deck. Thinking that the Warriors got another chance. <laughs> just say, this is your deck. They, they are done for. They are done for. Unless the, the guy who you said, the guy who you said will not be able to force his way out of Milwaukee, lest that dude come walking through that door, the Dunskies. It's over, man. It's over. Like, it's, I don't understand. So what, you argue, what you're arguing for, it, or the, the reason why there should be some optimism is because they might get some cap space. That ain't going to be the solution. You don't need cap space. You need... <laughs> replacements and unique replacements because the way that they've done things out there that you got to have the second best shooter in the world that that, that's what the perfect replace who's also awesome on defense like that is the replacement that they need so I don't see him finding it I don't see Draymond ever becoming under control or whatever that is this just doesn't seem like this is the future for them it's been awesome Steph's gonna give us some great games they'll make the playoffs again eventually but they do not seem like a championship contender uh for the rest of their run which is fine four titles more than anyone expected they didn't think we was gonna get any (laughs) and they got four look I'll say this like Andrew Wiggins was the at times the probably especially in the finals he was the second best player on that team Mm -hmm, and and I get it. Like, it's basically a three-month anomaly from the rest of the entirety of Wiggins' career where he's yeah. been underachieving, lethargic, barely there. Looks like he doesn't really give a damn. But, like, man, like, you just need production, you know? And, and like, not zeros from guys you're paying $30 million a year. Clay Thompson, again, th- maybe, obviously, He's overpaid on the $45 million contract after the Achilles, after the ACLs, after all of the ravages that have happened to his body. But, man, play like a starting level shooting guard in the freaking game that your season is on the line. Like, I don't think this is too crazy to ask around Steph, who's clearly still playing at an all-NBA level. Draymond is still playing at an all-defense level on defense. I don't think all is lost. I don't think they're close to being as good as Denver. Okay. Next they'll, year or make just the, one off. They're not make one the off season for being as good as Denver. They'll make the playoffs But yeah, they could be in the real playoffs. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's it. Well, I'll agree with you there. They got a chance to make the playoffs. And, and the, the nerve of you, that's Dominique, you just, you just won't let it go that Steph went at you. you the, the glee with which you said Celebrated the Warriors being finished. It's over. <laughs> nah, I mean, I can't. It's too late to take a victory lap. I said in that season that they will have zero titles, and I made zero goggles. In that same season, I said they would have zero titles for the rest of their run, made the goggles with my man Kendrick Perkins, both of our goofy <laughs> on TV going like this. They went that damn season and won the title. There is no get back. I lost. Like, I... <laughs> me and Kendrick, me and KP took an L. So I can take uh, as much glee as I want in this. I'm not, uh, but it doesn't matter because they did win a title in the season when I said they'll never get it, get back there again. So they win. I mean, I could point out all the ridiculous flukes that happened to get there, you, but it Steph doesn't Curry. matter. They I love you, Steph Curry. Thank you for that moment. <laughs> it's been uh, truly, truly. Well, Steph Curry loves Kevin Durant for saving their dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, yeah. Yeah. All they right. were the best team ever. Um, Waz, do you think all three of them retire Warriors? I think Clay is up in the air um, because I think he's going to get a better offer than Golden State values him at. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a hard decision to be made on both sides. Some people might say, oh, fuck that. Give Clay, you know, the four years, $90 million deal that he could probably get in Orlando somewhere. Um I don't know, man. I, I, I think the contract is a big deal. Like, they literally were in impasse um, before the season because Clay wanted his deal to be closer to his $45 million, basically 30-plus, where the Warriors is like, bruh, we got 20 for you. So I, I think Clay might be out of there. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's a distinct possibility. Good for him. 
Get up out of there, then. I mean, I yeah, I don't have this. Bread. Get your bread. Yeah, I, I don't have this. Great same. golf in Orlando. Yeah. He could you could probably get a boat and and, and, and get on a boat somewhere yeah. out there do his thing. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a lot warmer out on that boat. He won't need a coat. Um, and he can come back. You can come back a couple of years yeah, and we'll celebrate. We'll have some yeah. reunion stuff. It's cool. Yeah, I don't think them all staying together doesn't matter to me as much as I think some people are making out to. Maybe it does to to Steph, then then it should matter to them. But if Steph and Clay are all right with it, then they need to move on. So Steph, and I guess this is to your point, they should not care how Steph feels about it. They they should be trying to put yeah, a title. Yeah, I think it's like Steph, the proof is in the pudding, my brother. Yeah, he seems like he's <laughs> The cool proof is in the pudding. Yeah. All right, the last thing I wanted to get into, John Tay Lord. talk. Yeah. What do you think, Charlie? Lord have mercy. No, this, uh, I want to know, you're, like, you have... You've been in the room where it happens, oh, where the NBA discusses this stuff. What did you think about the Jonte Porter? He's banned for life. Adam po- Adam Silver loves to say banned for life. And how do you think it was handled by the NBA? And where do you think the, there's going to be another? I one. think so. It was handled fine by the NBA. No one is going to lose sleep. He yeah. what he did was stupid, and he's also not a big enough player. So this, as as has been said a number of times, this was the perfect situation for them because they have to punish somebody to have this guy do it. What I do think is interesting is this isn't going to go away. Mm-hmm. This problem isn't going to go away. The temptation for players to be involved in something like this, like mm-hmm. not all players are stars who make millions and millions of dollars. As long as there are prop bets for the fifth guy on the bench, there will be a temptation for one of the hundreds of other players who have all types of other people in their ear and around them. And those players who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars and not millions, there will be temptation for them to engage in this sort of low level match fixing. The problem is the reward for the players is so small, but the risk for the league is enormous if this becomes a thing. If we have two or three more situations like this, which the incentives haven't changed, so we might, maybe they'll get smarter. We have two more, two or three more situations like this. I think it impacts the way that fans view the game, which then hurts everybody. Yeah, I, I think obviously Adam Silver made the right and easy decision here. Mm-hmm. This dude was point shaving <laughs> yeah. um, and he got caught. So, yes, he should be banned for life, never to return. Go play in China somewhere. Uh, you know, I'm sure the CCP has some uses for that dude. <laughs> um, that that being said, I, I I think the story for me as somebody who works at a media company, who's in business with the DraftKings and the FanDuel's and the blah, 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 like the entire sports media complex is now in bed with these gambling people. The story to me is that they caught this because their business is predicated on not paying people out. Okay, they can't prop up a sports media industry. They can't put together a lucrative business by paying people. And so they flag. That's how this thing got flagged. It's like, wait a second. Who are we about to pay out a million something dollars to on what bet? And I think that's the real story. It's like, bruh. These things are not designed for people to win. And in fact, they're probably making their margins on some problem gamblers, if we're being honest about what this business is. And I think the fact that they can so easily and like the precision with which they could weed this out um, just tells you something about their business model and how they carry their business. And that, to me, is the story. Like, if an NBA player wants to take this off the freaking official betting sites and not use, like, a beard to make a bet and be like, yo, I want to go to bookies and you want to place millions of bets and try to get millions of dollars out of these illegal gambling operations via some fixing that you're doing, at that point, you're taking your life into your hands, bro. Yeah. Okay, but to me, the story is like the gambling companies don't want to pay nobody. Yeah, (laughs) it's 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 been a ridiculous amount since this stuff has gotten legal. There's been kind of to me, it it feels like an absurd number of incidences already across Mm. multiple sports. Like there were a bunch of lions that that time. There was the Calvin Ridley. There, mm-hmm. um, what just happened with EPA, there's this thing, but I, it feels like that's a lot in a short period of time, right? And I, that's not even all of them. So that's the part to me that I think is 
while nothing's been huge, we had that thing that, I mean, LeBron was not tied to it, but then it was like, it was Maverick Carter okay. that had a gambling thing. And like, of course, LeBron's not connected to it, but it doesn't matter. It's in the ether. Yeah. And it just seems like more and more of this stuff is pos- popping up. And we all can say that it, you're dumb if you get caught. So why is it happening so many times? And when's it going to stop? And I have no reason to believe that it's not that it's not going to continue to happen. And at some point, that takes a toll. Well, it's also, to me, the, the, one of the stories for me is the NBA already has, it depends on how you view this, whether it's an issue or it's by design. Like a lot of their sport right now is sport theater. It's about the personalities and the stuff outside of the court. And the last thing that you want is like, we all get legitimately so excited. Like we just talked about the playoff, the pressure of the playoffs. It's so exciting to be like genuinely who's going to win this stuff. And if they lose control or any of these leagues lose control, and we stop thinking it's genuine competition because you have a situation, a Juventus situation where there's actual stuff that's happening at the top level, that would be a huge issue for the league. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to not be that alarmed about it. And, you know, maybe it's my own red, white, and blue tinge goggles, but like they've had gambling in sports in Europe and Asia for decades now. Mm-hmm. And I, they'd seem to be have a pretty decent handle on it. I think we can figure this thing out in America. Yes, it's brand new for us, but I think over time, we, and they've had a lot of scandals, by the yeah. way. In Europe and Asia tied to sports and gambling with match fixing and all kinds of crazy stuff in combat sports and soccer, all of that stuff. Like they've had their fair share of controversies and, you know, people have they've gotten a handle on it. I think we're in the phase where Mm -hmm. it's brand new and so controversial things are happening. But I think over the long run, man, I feel confident that we can get through this as a as a sports consuming nation, Dominique, man. This, we better. The red, white, and blue. I'm about to say the anthem right now, man. As I'm of, standing for the anthem, Dominique. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get up with you because <laughs> as, as podcasters, please keep we need these them. companies afloat. I want them to be, y'all need to become the next Google uh, and Facebook and, and Amazon so somebody can pay for this digital gold that we're handing out. I appreciate your <laughs> optimistic view. We'll see yeah. what happens. So um, sports gambling is also your deck. We figured out. We found a couple of decks. <laughs> so America is your deck. <laughs> America, America is your deck. <laughs> is my deck. <laughs> oh, man. Capitalism right. is my deck. Okay. <laughs> All right, Waz. Well, it's a great place to stop. I appreciate you. Thanks again. Hall of Famer, Wozney Lane. Anytime, bros. Thank you. Next up, Rose of Thorns. He's so good. Oh. Has Dominique been lately? Bad or good? Let's find out. This is Roses and Thorns. All right. Time for your favorite segment with my favorite person, Roses and Thorns, with my wife, Ashley, and her iridescent shirt today. Sparkly. It is sparkly. Do you feel like I look like a mermaid? Like a covered up mermaid? Exactly. Sadly, I exactly what I was thinking. Was Are you serious? Yep. It's like a you're mermaid. being serious or you're just so serious. I, so I was like, hey, why am I interviewing a mermaid? I thought my wife's gonna be here. It was weird. Maybe because your wife is a mermaid. I mean, you can swim, but not like that. <laughs> not like that at all. <laughs> like People who swim, swim for exercise, I just don't get it. Like I can I swim mean, enough to stay alive. Maybe to keep my children though? alive. What choice? I mean, it... Maybe, but like, remember the time we went swimming a lot at my uncle's pool 2020 that summer? And one day, because we were bored, of, like, we weren't even worried about a child, but for fun, we were like, let's see if we can rescue something heavy from the bottom of the pool. Me, you, and my sister. Rescuing dead weight from a pool? Yeah. I'm not that like I I'm not Ariel. I could not have saved Eric. Eric would have died, but maybe I would have tried to die with him, and it could have been like some Romeo and Juliet thing. I wouldn't have. Yeah, I would have lived my mermaid life. <laughs> yeah, found me a new yeah, prince. Fortunate. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure that is a hell of an inconvenience that Eric would have appreciated whether you tried or not. But uh, I use the word inconvenience because I thought it was an interesting topic. Serafina, our producer, sent us this article yeah. from a YouTuber named Adela. Afadi? Right. Get it right. I think I got it right. right. Anyway, the the YouTube video, she was talking about how we no longer inconvenience ourselves or we don't ask even to inconvenience our friends. And she was making the argument. Life is convenient now. That she was making the argument that it was a mistake and we've lost some connections in those ways that were born of inconveniences. The example she used was like picking up from the airport and it may, I'm surprised because we had a little bit of conversation before we got on here about where you 
landed on this because I feel like this is the center of a lot of the things that you've tried to teach me about relationships and friendships. I'm, I don't know. I feel like I'm very cut and dry. It's like, it does not make sense to me if someone asked me to do something that they could do for themselves. It's, I remember my cousin used so, to So, uh, yes, questions. I was thinking, yeah. he'd be like, Google it. Yeah, but I, I mean, I feel bad because I guess it's just oh, opportunities for conversations and yeah. I don't really like lose contact. And I think a lot of men probably can relate to this. Like you lose contact with friends because you no longer live close to them. You no longer like play games with them or do whatever the things that give you a reason to be together and then you don't have much of a reason to talk to them unless you're asking them for something and then you're like hey i can google the answer to that question or i don't need a ride from the airport i could uber that i could uber here or there and then you never really unless you are like deliberate about hey let's go to dinner which is hard to do with guys you never really have those relationships so i and i think there's also some value to um the emotional connection, I guess, drawn of someone, drawn from someone sacrificing. That's something that I know I appreciate. But I know you, like, I feel like one of your love languages is sacrifice. And sometimes, like, it's like, like the stuff you do for me and for our family. Um, and, like, that is the way. And I'm, you wrote that, like, in our, so when we got engaged, he gave me a card. Sounds like this is too real. And I've never framed it, but I've, like, meant to. And I even bought a second version of it. These so I can have, like, all this it's the most beautiful card. But you mentioned something about, like, through sacrificing and da-da-da-da. Like, what he was sacrificing? I don't know. Maybe having sex with other women. Pro- probably in his mind. That was the main sacrifice. I don't but because at the time, I feel like I wasn't really burdening you that much. Over time, that has changed. But you certainly do value sacrifice. And you're right. It's interesting because I would say, and this isn't, I think, in the, I don't, I think sacrifice is actually one of, in the person who wrote the book yeah, about love I mean, languages. Like, but inconveniencing yourself is not. But I feel like I will happily inconvenience myself for friends, like as a way of like showing love. Like recently, I had a vegetarian friend in town. I was like racking my, clearly, I could have ordered like any vegetarian meal online and we eat a lot of meat in our household or in fish and she doesn't eat fish either and I was like really intent on like cooking a meal for her and her family um when they were in town a vegetarian meal so I came up with something I could cook like literally my peas have pork in them like like everything I cook has meat so it was a challenge it might not sound like a challenge to most people but it was a challenge for me and I cooked this big meal it was stuff my family would like with meat and also um was parmesan so like veal and chicken and eggplant for her parmesan and making sure the sauce didn't have meat in it which it normally would when I cook it um and like that was like when I have like family over and like want to make sure I have every drink that all of them like and like I want to stay up later than I want to to entertain them like um I a friend's having a birthday party coming up and I want to make the perfect playlist for her not just entrusted to Spotify right like like so I think I do like almost yeah. to inconvenience myself for friends but her example was like dominique said the the youtuber or yeah, blogger right. or whatever her example was picking people up from the airport and so in dc where we live there are three local-ish airports one is like 10 minutes from our house um it's uh even in we even in an uber black suv it's like 25 dollars <laughs> um there's dallas which is a little farther and then farthest from us it's bwi it sounds like you're gonna say that friends. that's where you draw the line no it's not where i draw the line but like i just that's that's not one that is salient to me as an example right. because that just seems kind of like like while i would sacrifice for my friends and i also don't expect so or inconvenience myself feels- for my friends and i don't expect my friends to inconvenience themselves for me as much i think i have a lot of like baggage around the fact that i don't have a job right like mm-hmm. like and so it's like an insecurity of mine it's like well because i don't have a job i can show up more for people during certain hours not during all the hours but during certain hours then i can expect people to show up for me because they're busy with their jobs and their children and all the other things but i have time to make a playlist because i don't have a job like i can make a playlist while i'm in the carpool line right but um but like picking up from an airport it's not where i draw a line it's just like I think it's like I will send you an Uber like and then I will see you after. But I do remember I was actually upset. We had a death in our family last year and I really wanted to pick up someone who was really affected by the death from the airport. But she was like, no, my flight got in early, which I do all the time. My dad likes picking up and she hopped in an Uber and I felt bad because I wanted to be there for her like and receive her into town. But I don't, I don't, I think it'd be rude is, to ask someone to pick. Yeah, I'm drawing a line at, at, at this particular, or drawing a line anywhere for it. These type of inconveniences, I think, is kind of odd because just like you mentioned, there's easy ways around all the other ones. Like you could have ordered food if read yeah. the vegetarian thing. So, like, I think the 
the idea of inconvenience. I don't know. It, it was. It but it's just such a cheap, a quick ride. Yeah. But a friend of mine recently way, was saying matter. she's from New Orleans, yeah. and she gets mad if her mom doesn't pick her from the airport because apparently the airport's so far there that it's a minimum seventy five dollar Uber, and it's and I don't like long Uber rides. So like I would rather ride in a friend's car for a long time than yeah, in I a mean, long Uber ride. But it's about how short and easy it is in D.C. where I'm like, but you could just, which makes it less inconvenient. So it's not that like, like picking someone up from Nashville for me could maybe only take 30 minutes out of my day, perhaps, depending on where I had to drop them. Yet, I don't know. I still I just feel like that's silly. Like it's it wouldn't even be that inconvenient for me. It's just silly. So I'm about efficiency. But I also will inconvenience myself. I mean, I feel like you're trying to justify a point where you don't have to justify it. Like, the point is there's some things that you don't want to do. And you're not going to do things that you don't want to do. Because there but are I other things. I do do a lot of ways. things. I, don't, I do so many things I don't want to do. Oh, no. I'm saying in this in this particular scenario, which is fine. Yeah. Are you saying that there's, like, arguing that that inconvenience is a better inconvenience, I think doesn't matter. The point is, and so I'm going to to uh, Detroit and my cousin lives there and he offered to pick me up from the airport and I was like hell no I'll pick up the airport I'll get Uber I'll, I'll Uber to your place and, and listen, I'll be there and that seems to me completely unnecessary but I understand that that the the uh, YouTuber is arguing that you should do ask for those things from people because it does create an opportunity for connection and it does give people an opportunity to give you to express to you some level of affection because it is whether you want to call it sacrifice or inconvenience it's the same it's in the same uh, ballpark so i'll say my dad always wants to pick us up from the airport whenever we travel with the kids and i think like my dad does not have the uber app on his phone he's probably been in an uber like twice because like my sister's or me, we've been going somewhere with him. And we're like, no, like we will not worry about parking. Like maybe one, like I don't even know that he's been in Uber twice. My mom probably has, but neither of them have it. And so I honestly think for him, it's like he just doesn't realize how easy Uber from National to our house is. Um, I but I feel bad. Wrong is I think that he likes to do it. I think that it's, well, he does it, like to drive. And no, no, I think we get back and know that we got back. It's safely. the same way that you say that it's an expression of like. Hey, he likes to show up for you. He wants to be the one to get up early and drive you. But like, sometimes that's the, it inconveniences it's exactly what we're you talking. when he picks Agreed. <laughs> I know. Like, like I felt and bad. And that is you. <laughs> that's <laughs> the same thing. That's you expressing I'm like, I'm not going to wait at the airport 35 minutes <laughs> for right. you to get here when I could get an Uber here in four <laughs> minutes because our flight got in early and I couldn't tell you that when I was asleep on the plane. Um, so I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know. What ways do you... So I think you are someone who really sacrifices, but I also think that you... Um, kind of go in waves with like how close you are in your friendships do you see yourself as someone who outside of the airport question no. like agrees with this statement oh sorry what statement that you should inconvenience yourself for your yes. friends i agree and do that you believe you that you're someone that does um no would you like to more um yes Aww. no not really <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I like to uh, be there for my friends. I don't know. I'll get around to these kind of it is. It just always feels like there's. The dumb stuff is the stuff like showing up for somebody is different. So like being there at a time when someone needs you is different than doing something that could be easily accomplished. Otherwise, I recognize that this is probably right. It's going to take some time for me to get to the point where it's like, all right, let's completely waste our time because it's not a waste of time. It is an opportunity to deepen our relationship, I guess. Last night, he was in bed with me, and I'm in a compelling person to be in bed. I'm not. I'm not at all a compelling person to be in bed with. I'm disgusting. Um, I don't know what idiot, where this is headed. It's making me no, nervous. No, but we'll you see. got Luckily, up I'm and you were like, problem. I'll be back in oh. like 30 minutes because some of your friends were playing Xbox Live mm -hmm. and like you didn't is that what's called Xbox Live like yeah. you talk yeah, to yeah, each yeah. other and you didn't even really want to play and you were actually back in 10 minutes apparently like the game didn't go so well but you were like but it because you recognize it's like your chance to like yeah. and you had to walk and I hate going up and down the steps tonight yeah, I don't have that same problem I know like, he doesn't I'm mind I'm like ooh, all the way to another so. floor yeah. um that's crazy um but he had to walk all the way to the basement from like the floor where our bedrooms are so down two flights of steps and then back up um and you did so I mean yes that's yeah. a small thing and I, you know, I don't think your friends were seeing it as you inconvenience yourself, but like right. you weren't that into playing. You just wanted to see them. So I see you doing it in different ways here and there. Me too. I'm perfect. Never mind. You we don't are. Need I really love you and I think you're really great. Uh, nice. Good it job. It makes them feel weird. We have that recorded for, um, forever for when yes. the next time you complain. 
Oh, no. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. And this applies in a relationship and in friendships, too. Although what's funny is, like, I don't really complain in my friendships, which I think you realize. Like, I'm like, oh, like, I'm not the type to have, like, blow-ups in friendships. So, like, we oh, need yeah. to address this issue. Like, it'll ebb, it'll flow, we'll be all right, or we won't. Like, and I've been seeing more and more, like, memes about, like, some people are part of your life just for a time, and that's okay. Like, impermanence in relationships friends. is okay. I wouldn't even say it's conditional. It's just, like, uh, in our lives, we yeah. have different phases and different chapters, and maybe some people fit one that don't fit another. Um, but I'm not, like, I don't pick at my friends at all or expect, like... I know who they are. I know what I'll get from them. Like, I don't want stuff from you, but I do want a lot from you. Um, And so I will pick at you, but I don't that often, do I? No, I mean, it works just fine. Yeah. I don't know. I think that there are, like, types of um, relationships that, like, you get upset with your friends, but you know that they're going to be there all, like, forever. There are a group of core friends that you have like that. I feel like I've developed some core friends that are like that, and I would like to be there for them more often. I would like to. The, where I draw the line, though, is, like, I hate asking for shit. And so I, I like when my friends do things or demonstrate some sort of inconvenience to show that they care about me, I'm sure, but I'll never give them the chance if it's something easy that I can take care of. So maybe I need to do better about yes. inconveniencing my friends. Okay, give me, like... Literally, I'll be making myself some eggs in the morning and I'll be like, do you want some? And he's like, no. And he'll come right behind me and make eggs like you do it less. I will say you've gotten better with that. But like he doesn't even like me to do things that I'm already doing that it adds like it doesn't even add on more than how long does it take to crack two more eggs? Like more than 15 seconds onto what I'm doing. Maybe it takes a little bit longer to cook them all too from scratch. I don't know. But like you really don't like asking for stuff. But at least with me, I feel like, or even letting people do kind things for you, like even me. Um, and so I get how that's a challenge for you with friends. Um, but you've gotten better at it with me. So like, but what is an example? Actually, you know what? You asked Christina to quote to for Wizard Tickets the other day. Yep. I mean, you pay, but you know, like yeah. you ask them for their ticket connect. Like, yep. so there are, I don't know, which is something you wouldn't have done. And honestly, I was like, well, I have a guy I could email to. <laughs> like, but I was proud of you for that. Thank you. I'm getting better at asking people. I mean, I didn't ask for free. I want to pay. I did pay for my tickets, but I know. they had the connection that would be helpful. So, yep, I need friends to do things for me. All right. So, wrap this up. I have any? a rose of the week. Okay. The Metro Tigers win their game by one point. So that's, for those who don't know, I'm coaching for the second season, my son's flag football team. And again, and inconveniencing the hell out of his life for his children. Yeah. Like, like anything. For them. Yeah. It seems very inconvenient coaching it, them guys. It is very inconvenient, but I've come to realize that it. I do really like it. I mean, mostly because they're, they're like honest about how much they care about these things and they're willing to work hard and sacrifice. They complain and all that stuff, but it's fine. And they had a great game. We got off to a big lead and then the other team came back and almost tied it up and we won at the end. And I think the it's a real cool opportunity also for like all those cliches about coaches. And I've never really felt like I've had that coach in my life. As many coaches as I've had, I've never felt like I had the like – coach taught you about life guy I don't have that guy but it's cool to be that for these kids and then hear about them actually like taking some responsibility in their personal life because things that we focus on is like we're going to take responsibility be supportive of each other and all that sort of stuff but they really want to win so <laughs> as we talked about before this season has been a lot more focused on getting wins and playing well and they're managing really well so I'm proud of them we ran suicide yesterday I'm sore I ran him with him yes he was when he had to get up to walk downstairs he moaned and I was like what's wrong he said I was running today with the boys and I was thinking like people his age just said oh with the 10 year olds 11 year okay 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 yeah, it's the change so of Direction. Still still well, they don't have none of them <laughs> that I know of have had knee or hip surgery. No, so on that, they anyway, haven't. I have another one too, and it's that More. he let me buy him some stuff on Amazon so he can dress country tomorrow for our cowboy theme party. I can't wait. He's dressing up, guys. He's getting in on a theme. Emma, I? I don't. All I saw was a belt. What else is there? And a bolo, and you're gonna wear all denim. I am. No hat though, right? That's un unfortunate. Maybe, maybe not. No, I'm happy. I don't need a hat. I'm good. Hatless is the way to go. I, I know wanna, that's what you want. I just want to disappear. Like that's generally my goal when I go to parties. It's like let me just everybody leave me. I don't want to be the star. Like it's not my damn party. 
Whereas me, I can't decide which of the three outfits I've ordered. <laughs> that fit me because I ordered like 10, <laughs> about seven didn't fit. That's pretty bad numbers, guys. But about three, I could get my body in in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and which one am I going to wear? I don't know. Um, they don't all know. will look great. We're looking forward to it. I'm sure the internet will appreciate when you post it on your Instagram. My three followers. Yeah, yes, they three will. of them. All right. Well, thank you so much. What? Nothing. Oh, you gave me a dirty look. It's not it's dirty like. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. All right. Well, thank you so much for doing this again with me and everything else that you do. All thank the sacrifices. Everything you do with me. You're welcome. It's getting nasty. All right. Thank you to all the great producers. Thank you, Charlie, Serafina, Megan, Kevin, Brian, and Cortez. And, and congratulations. To Brian. Oh, right. did we already do that? Yeah, I did that, yes, on the last episode. Well, guess what? I wasn't here. Right. He doesn't have me on every day, which is weird. That is weird. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show.